The Florida Seminoles. The gangster way. All right. Now, before we roll into this lecture, right, I need all of you all to understand something right away. That the Florida Seminoles was what they would call a Native American tribe. But these Florida Seminoles, hold on. Try to get it all the way in the camera. There we go. Okay. So the Florida Seminoles is what they call a native tribe. But the Florida Seminoles, they all had carbon in their skin. Okay? So we can't roll into this story this evening about your ancestors. Because every story of every native tribe is about your ancestors. Like, if you want to learn more about your ancestors, now that you know that there is no such thing as Indians or native tribes and that these so-called native tribes were black people. All right. Now that you know that, once you understand that, you can you can you can go even further into your history because you can you can learn so much more about us and the stages we fell from when you learn that they talking about us when they talk about these Native American tribes. All right. Now they want us to believe. All right. They want us to fully believe that. Hello. Now they want us to believe. They want us to believe that Florida Seminoles was a Native American tribe. And they want you to believe that the Native Americans were separate from African Americans. All right. So I did a lecture uh, a few classes ago about the, the Illinois. All right. About Chief Chicago in Illinois. So in that lecture, I was talking about how I was going to start doing a lot of classes about these different Native tribes. And, you know, just so you can learn more about us. that th These are your people. These are us. All right. After we fell in frequency, remember, and I'm going to do a lecture on that too, the origin story all over again, just for the website. So don't worry about it. <clears throat> but after after they invaded our planet in 1492, we fell in frequency right during this war. So we became tribal. OK. And when we remember when we became tribal, I was telling you how when we became tribal, you know, we took on all these different, you know, monikers and things like that just to survive and continue to fend and fight them off. All right, but we never war with each other. We still was connected with one another. We just took on different tribes. All right, we 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 kind of merged into tribes to stick together. So when you're talking about tribes, you know the two most powerful tribes to ever walk the face of this earth that that they will at least tell you about after the fall is the Florida Seminoles. And the Illinois. All right. Now, we already touched on the Illinois. Today, we finna touch on the Florida Simmons. All right. And they and they wasn't no joke, man. Like, you got to understand, when you talking about the Gullah Wars and all of this type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? This all was connected to this. All right. You talking about South Carolina. You talking about North Carolina. You talking about all these states, right, that have taken on the names of these native chiefs and these different tribes. All right. That's why I say your ancestors wasn't no joke, man. This is what they fear. Okay? They fear you having that seminal mentality or that Illinois mentality. Because guess what? If you notice something about the so called Indians, you notice they was always at war, they was always fighting. You notice that? In most stories that you're going to hear about native tribes, notice they will always somehow be in some sort of war. Because, see, when we was in this state as a people of what they were calling Indians, because now they, now, they, now they call us African-Americans. We're not Indians anymore. We're not Seminoles. We're not Illinois. We're not, <coughs> we're not Iroquois. We're not Cherokee. They don't call us that anymore. They call us Puerto Ricans. They call us uh, African-Americans. Okay? You got to remember, this is strictly over here in the United States where this, where this took place at. President of the United States. All right, here, man. All right, President of the United States. So, President of the United States. All right.
Let's get into it. So let's look at the map. Let's get a map up here of the United States. Boom. This the whole country. This the whole country. This your terrain. This is we let's let's go over this. Let's do a little geography right now. This is geography one on one. <coughs> geography one on one right now. So this is your country, right? Now remember how I've taught you that. Remember, keep in mind, I'll do the I'll do a separate lecture on it down the road, class. But keep in mind that no state looks like this. None of these states are shaped like this. Just keep that in your mind. Just keep that in your mind. And remember that Arizona is the back of Africa, and Mexico leads down into present day what they would call Africa. But that's a different lecture. But still, just keep that in your motherfucking mind, okay? At all times, be aware of your terrain. This would be called your terrain, your area, your topography. All right, geography, topography, your terrain. Always be aware of where you are on the map, okay? Always be aware of where you are in your city, your state, the map. Always be aware of north, east, north, east, south, and west. For they actually exist. They are not a part of the matrix. These are or organic constructs, which is why the matrix still has to abide by it to some extent. Okay? I'm giving you, I'm giving you real, I'm giving you real metaphysical keys right now with that. It's gonna make sense later. That's one of them video game tokens. You know how you play a video game and then you get some shit in the game, and you be like, what the fuck they give me this for? And then later on in the game, you're like, oh, that's why they gave me that. That's one of them gems. Thank you, you, you guys could you could thank later. You don't even worry about it. And especially as we move on with like magic, when you get deeper into magic, you want to definitely always be aware of your terrain. Okay? The elite still use a lot of magic. They still play with a lot of magic. They still go off the terrain. This is why they show you the map like this. This is why they make the certain states, certain colors on their map. Okay? For certain reasons. Okay? All right? That's a whole nother lecture, though. All right, but let's stay focused. So we down here today. Now, when we spoke about the Illinois, we used to talk about the biggest tribe. So the Illinois had, they covered Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and North South Dakota, and North Dakota. So they had all of this, this whole borderline Kentucky, Ohio, all of that was the Illinois land. All right, now, the cherry, I'm glad you see that, okay? So, boom, check this out. This like the Mississippi right here. It's the Mississippi River. You see the state of Mississippi right there? The Mississippi River runs all the way up through Illinois. All right, so that's important that you remember this line right here. All right, because I know they taught us this in high school, but a lot of people probably forgot it. Certain things they didn't lie about, certain things you need to remember. Okay, certain things on the map. You need to remember, and you need to know they stand out for a reason. This line, the Mississippi River, is a is is a, is very important in this, in this on this realm. The Mississippi River, which is, I'll do a separate lecture on the Mississippi River, is not what you think it is. Okay, but it's very very important on the map. Notice it sits in the middle. It almost sits in the middle because the land, it actually sits directly in the middle because the land is more land than they showing you on the map. So if they showed you the map in the correct size of the land that they're calling America right now, you would see that the Mississippi is right in the middle of it. Now, why is that important? Because if you'll notice, as we'll find out later in the lecture, that the elites, when they came across the Atlantic Ocean from Europe, all right, when they came, which... They never even came across the water. That's a whole nother lecture, though. Remember, ocean is your ancestor. It was no ocean here when they first came. They came into our realm through portals in the Caucasus Mountains. You can reach the Caucasus Mountains on land without ever going over any water. All of these, what you think, countries like Europe and all this, is connected to America still to this day. All right, you can touch all these countries by land. They're making you think you have to go over the water. That's a whole nother lie. You know what I'm saying? To keep you thinking that your topography, your geography, your terrain looks the way they're showing it, showing this to you. All right. So now all of these like ancient cities, like when you're talking about Egypt and you talk about Morocco, like all this shit is over here in this country. All right. But that's a whole nother lecture. And I'll break that down. 
But let's stay focused on the Mississippi River. Okay, so this is the Mississippi River right here. Okay, notice the Illinois tribe, they had everything along it. All right, now, after that, you left with Kentucky, VA, Carolina, Tennessee. Okay, this area right here, Virginia, was always considered an entry, entry land or an entry state. So long before they ever landed on our realm, this land of what's now present-day Virginia was always used as an entrance portal. Okay, it's actually portals in the oceans of Virginia. This is why the elites always mention Virginia as being the first place where they enslaved us at. Okay, it has everything to do with, you know, longitude, latitude, the coordinates, magic, uh, celestial energies, gateways, all of that. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole other lecture, though. All right, but the, these that's why they came through here. These four states, Kentucky, Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, like, and, and we're back when we were in the native phase, that was all Cherokee land. And that's what they don't really tell you, but Kentucky, Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Alabama, and Mississippi, all of this, listen, all of this, all of that was Cherokee land. All of this, look at this line I'm drawing. Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, along West Virginia, Washington, D.C., Virginia, down North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, all of that, Alabama, that whole was, was Cherokee land. All this was Cherokee land. Okay? All this was Cherokee land. That's why if you look at the Trail of Tears, they made the Cherokee pack up from Georgia, which you can still, the Trail of Tears starts in Georgia and the Appalachian Mountains, which run along the whole country, the Appalachian Mountains, they, they run from Georgia all the way up the east coast of them to New York. All right? But... If you notice the Trail of Tears, when they was making the Indians, which was really us, March, which was the Cherokee Indians to be exact, which was us, black people, March, the gods and goddesses, March from Georgia all the way to fucking Indian Territory. Now, Indian Territory was on the other side of the Mississippi River in present-day Oklahoma. So all of present-day Oklahoma was what they was calling Indian Territory, which is what they was promising the Cherokee when they made them pack up and walk from Georgia, literally walk from Georgia all the way to Oklahoma. And on that walk, a lot of them died. And that's why it's called the Trail of Tears. All right, and this is the Mississippi River, right? They had to cross the Mississippi, all right, to get to Indian Territory, which is present-day Oklahoma. Now, I'm going to connect all this shit right now. When you talk about Black Wall Street and Tulsa, all of those people that was in Black Wall Street that was rich as fuck because all the people that was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street. Hold on. Let's pull it up real quick. Let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. Black Wall Street. Let me just show y'all something, right? Let me just connect shit for you. I'm basically letting you know that all the black people from Black Wall Street that was successful, those were Cherokee Indians, man. But they showed you, show them to you, they show them to you in a... In history, look, the Tulsa race war, right? Black Wall Street massacre, right? When you had that successful black town that they bombed, all right? All those that what they are calling black residents, what they are not telling you is that those so-called black residents got there. They got there during this trail of tears when they made the Cherokee pack up and walk across to Indian Territory in Oklahoma, they were sending all of all the black people to Oklahoma. They was calling the Indian Territory. You had to leave your land behind. They wanted all of that because they were trying to form what they got today. All these states to make their country. So that's what was going on. All right. That's imperative that you know that. Because down here you had this last piece of land that we know is Florida. All right. And Florida was owned by the Spanish. Now, what you got to understand is in history, they try to call them the British. They say they tell you about Great Britain and Spain and Portugal. All right. And then they tell you that the USA had to gain their own independence from Great Britain to form the USA. But that's all bullshit. All right. Great Britain, Spain, Portugal. These are all the same motherfuckers. All right. These are all draconian, reptilian owned, Pleiadian owned. All right. This whole realm is ran by the 13 families. All right, which is the original 13 bloodlines. 
And they are all the, the highest ranking human being families. And I told you who they checked in with. They was checking in with the Draconian Reptilians and the Pleiadians, who are the extraterrestrial races who run the whole damn realm, who got us under this, under this, under, under this vast system. Okay? Now, and I've been told you that the Draconian Reptilians on a higher level are really the fallen gods posing as Draconian Reptilians. And these fallen gods all work for Zeus, a.k.a. Satan. So we know what's going on here. All right? So let's stay locked in. Now, they call this Florida because this is what the Spanish named it. All right? They named it Spanish Florida. Florida is a Spanish name. All right? Now, but this land before it became present-day Florida... It was the last bit of land that was owned by a certain group of us that they called Florida Seminoles. All right. And the Florida Seminoles, they are feared. They were they are still feared and respected to this day. All right. Because of how hard they fought. Now. Like these Cherokee Indians, they made a lot of Cherokees go and go into Indian territory in Oklahoma across the Mississippi. Yes, they did. But not all of us, though. Only so many. Why? Because we are everywhere. So, all your present-day black people that's living in Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia, all of them are the descendants of Cherokee. So, if you live in any of these states, you Cherokee. You Cherokee. Your bloodline going to trace back to Cherokee. You go back a few generations, it's going to be Cherokee. Now, you can break it down to Choctaw and all of that. You can go, it's going to be Cherokee. If you in them states and, and anybody in Florida, you're going to be Seminole. They not going to tell you that. I'm telling you that, though. Because most tribes, they didn't just, they didn't kill us all off. They only killed off the strongest ones. Then what happened, with, what would happen was they would, when we would go to war with them, they would attack certain tribes. We would go to war with them. The strongest ones always died or became or, 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 or were captive. All right. So that left the other ones, you know, like, OK, well, we're not going to fight. We just going to comply. They never moved these so-called Indians out of any of these states. Some moved went to Indian territory in Oklahoma. And that was just out of the Cherokee Nation. They didn't move to all the Illinois. They didn't move them off. They killed the leaders off. And then once they gave in, they forced them to sign the land over, and then they renamed them. All right? And they did this in every region and every state. But with these Florida Seminoles, man, the spirit of these individuals is still there in the Floridians to this day. Why you think all the craziest stories come out of Florida? We know all the craziest shit to be going on. Them stories come out of Florida. Why? Because the spirit is still there in Florida. Ancestral energy, it never leaves, y'all. It's still there. It's on every single being with carbon in them. If you got carbon in you, it's on you. It's in you and it's on you. And these Florida Seminoles fought hard. And the reason they are to be talked about is because they are one of the last tribes that was still in tune with the deepest of the ancient magics where they was communicating with the animals. They was one with the alligators and the snakes and the white copper heads down in them Everglades. What the Florida Seminoles accomplished against the Spanish conquistadors was nothing less of amazing compared to what they had been reduced to. But this story is going to teach you how we are connected to nature and how they used it. To hold these beings off for so long. And then, you know, eventually, by like 1850, you know, they eventually got Florida. But they still respect it to this day. That seminal name. All right. So let's, let's, let's look at it. Let's look at, let's look at history and see how they lied and tried to hide shit. So, boom. These are the seminal wars. All right. Let's talk about it. The seminal wars. Also known as the Florida Wars, were, th were three related military conflicts in Florida between the United States Army and the Seminoles, a Native American group which had coalesced in the Spanish Florida during the early 1700s. Now, 
They lying right there. Of course, we are not Native Americans. These were black people. Remember, the Florida Seminoles were black. I, they want you to believe that Native Americans were separate from black people, that they were a separate group of people. No, these were black people, but they got to call us Native Americans to hide us from us. All right. So and when they say during the early 1700s, no, this this fight started from the moment they landed. So this fight with the Seminoles was the original war that was going on since 1452. It's just the Seminoles was the last tribe to hold out. All right, basically after the Seminoles, then we became African Americans. Put it like that. All right, so the fight in the curb between about 1816 and 1858, with two periods of, of uneasy truce between active conflict, both in human and monetary terms. The Seminole Wars was the long, were the longest and most expensive of the Indian wars in the United States in United States history. All right, so I told y'all, even to this day, it's the most respected. That sim that war they have the Seminoles, they ain't never lost as many lives as they did in that Seminole War. Not even in the Civil War. Even in the in the Civil War, they didn't lose as many people as they did to in that Seminole, in that Seminole War. Alright? Like the Seminoles fucked them up for a very long time. That's what you gotta know. These were black people. Fucked them up for a very long time. A very, very, very long time. A lot of people became famous in this war. That's where Andrew Jackson got his stripes at in the first Seminole War. Your president, Andrew Jackson, the one they always want to show. When he was in a war, he was a general in that war. See, General Andrew Jackson. All right? So we're going to talk about the first Seminole War. The first Seminole War began with General Andrew Jackson's excursions into West Florida and East Florida against the Seminoles after the conclusion of the War of 1812. All right? The governments of Great Britain and Spain, same motherfucker, don't be fooled, y'all. Great Britain and Spain, they want you to think they're two different people. Same motherfuckers. That's how they get you. They split themselves up into 12 different anomalies, and you think these 12 different people know these are the same motherfucker. All right? Great Britain and Spain, same motherfucker, both expressed outrage over the invasion. Lies. All right? So let's talk about how the whole war starts, okay? So, as you can see, notice, it's three different wars. You got the first Seminole War, the second Seminole War, then the third one. So you know this was a serious war. They got three separate wars. You get what I'm saying? Three separate wars. Your ancestors was gangsters. And, and you know, this Wikipedia. Wikipedia still ain't going to tell you the real, real, real. That's what I'm here for. I'm just showing you some of what Wikipedia is saying because they on the head with it. You got to remember, Wikipedia don't let, they not letting you know that these are black people. We, Wikipedia is telling you they Native Americans. I'm telling you this, your, your black people, this black people. They talking about us, man. All right? So... They, they telling you a lot of truth right here because they like, well, black people don't know that they, these are their ancestors we're talking about. They're going to think we're talking about some goddamn Native Americans who are separate from them. So right now they think they're talking over our head. But long as we know <coughs> that we are the fucking Indians that never existed. All right. Then we know what the fuck is going on right here. Shit right here going to make a lot more sense to how shit became where it is today. All right. So General Andrew Jackson's excursion into West Florida and East Florida. And they call it excursions. You see that? You see this word? Excursions. Nigga, you literally invaded our motherfucking ancestors land, nigga. Y'all had already took. Hold on. Get it understood. Let's get it understood. These bitches had already took all the Cherokee land. They had already was. Killed off most of the Illinois. You get what I'm saying? And then they come down here in the floor to try to fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? And they couldn't get that last bit. They had everything else already and they still wanted to how greedy they is. The Seminoles was the last tribe to hold off. That mean they had already conquered California. All this was conquered. California is, is named after a black goddess. That's a whole nother lecture though that I'm going to give y'all. How they did our black tribes over there in California was ridiculous. Then named the fucking state after the head high priest goddess of the tribe, Miss Cali California herself. 
That was a black goddess. And they turn around and slaughter our people and name the state after her. But that's like I said, that's a whole nother lecture I'm going to do. All right. We over here in Florida right now. But. I like that word, though. You see what I'm saying? I like that word. That's what I want y'all to see. How they word some shit. You see what I'm saying? These motherfuckers then came and invaded our land. Nigga. And then want to say it in, in on Wikipedia. Excursions. They, they call them excursions. But if, if me and my homies go running somebody else's crib right now, you're going to call it a home invasion. You see it? You see them, y'all? When they do it, it's an excursion. We do it, it's a home invasion. You see what I'm saying, babe? We do it, we still it, babe. We, we do it, y'all, it's a home invasion, y'all. But when Andrew Jackson do it, it's an excursion. <laughs> That's what I want y'all to see, man. I want my people to be awakened. All right? And then you got so many black people that don't read, so they don't even know what that word means. You know what I'm saying? They talking all over their little head. And they, 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 they too lazy to go look it up. But that's what Rashad Jamal is here for. See what I'm saying? I'm here to connect shit. We here to just ask questions for friends. Because I, I, I want to paint a picture tonight. You see what I'm saying? I got to paint a picture. You feel me? Y'all got to feel me, man. Like when I be all turned up in my lectures and shit, it be because of shit like this, man. Like, I know what the fuck they did to us. You feel me? And other motherfuckers don't really know. This shit ain't connecting to them. You see what I'm saying? It just ain't connecting. You feel me? So, we here though. Look at them. First Seminole War began with General Andrew Jackson's excursions into West Florida and East Florida against the Seminoles after the conclusion of the War of 1812. All right. Now, what y'all got to know about Eighth the Wharf 1812 was when they say Great Britain and Spain and all them was fighting against each other. And the reason this war is, 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 is let, 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 let's even talk about how the war kick off. OK, OK. So basically, Andrew Jackson was in the War of 1812. Right. This is what they tell you in history. And then I, I'll click into the War of 1812 so y'all can see it for yourself. But Andrew Jackson this is how he got his little general stripes in this war. Before the War of 1812, his bitch ass was not no general in their army. He was just Andrew Jackson in a motherfucker. He was Private I, Andrew Jackson. You feel me? But in this motherfucking War of 1812, he got his stripes. He got his stripes up. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was, he was he got his stripes up. He was still helping them still a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? So he a general by the time he gets to the Seminole Wars. But in the War of 1812, he was just like. Like, you know, he like a lieutenant and shit like that. So um, you'll see when I click into it that he had a thing against the Seminoles anyway. And it's like they want you to believe that the Seminole Wars started in 1816. But the, the Seminole Wars really started in 1492 when they first landed. They was the last of us to hold out, y'all. That's what I want y'all to know about the Seminoles. Like they was the last of us black people to hold out against being westernized. After they got rid of the, after they killed the leaders of the Seminoles and enslaved the rest of the Seminoles, then they reclassified us as all as African Americans and they was able to fully do what they wanted to do. They had the whole land in. You get what I'm saying? The last piece of land they needed. Remember, this was the last piece of land they needed, y'all. And I'm gonna show it to y'all. I'm gonna show it to y'all tonight in the lecture. You know what I'm saying? It's called the Louisiana Purchase. We're gonna we gonna, I'm gonna bring it up. But they had conquered all this. So this was the last piece of land they needed, but they couldn't get it because of the Seminoles. So that war went on for 400 plus years of their of their of their man-made years. All right. Now, like they said here, they want to call it excursions, but we know what it was. They were still in shit. All right. So that's what kicked the war off. General Jackson, you know what I'm saying? But they try to say that the governments of Great Britain and Spain were outraged over the invasion of, 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 of basically Andrew Jackson invading the Seminole land. Remember, the Seminoles had all of Florida. So Andrew Jackson went into Florida and East Florida, West Florida and East Florida on bullshit fucking with, with the Seminoles. All right? Now, for you to understand how the Seminole War kicked off, you got to understand what happened. So let's go to the War of 1812. Okay, so we in the War of 1812. Now, this was the war that featured, this is the War of 1812. Now, they're lying. These are all lies. They got you believing in history that the fucking, it's called the 60-year war. The War of 1812. 
They got you believing that it was between fucking, um, was a conflict fought between the United States and its allies against the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland and its dependent colonies in North America and its allies. That's a fucking lie. All right. The War of 1812 was just another war that took place, all right, on our on our realm because they were trying to conquer us. So it was all type of little wars breaking out. Y'all hear me? And to disguise and to cover that shit up in history, they do shit like this and call it different names. War of 1812 or War of this, War of that or this and that. And they try to make it seem like, like no, this was all being fought. It was still us fighting against them. And this is how you're going to know I'm not, they not, they lying. Because they're going to mention us in this war. Now, in this whole war, when you read it, they're going to have you thinking that it's Great Britain and Ireland and all this shit. Okay, cool. We hear you. We hear you. But watch this, though. Watch this, though. We're going to keep scrolling, though. We're going to keep scrolling. Okay? We're going to keep scrolling. All right? They're talking about America expanding west and all that shit. Nigga, we know who America is. Great Britain, Spain, all the same motherfucker. All right? So we ain't no even reading all these lies. We ain't got to do all that. See what I'm saying? That's how they get your ass sometimes. You want to go dive deep into the shit. And you know they lying already. When you you when you up, here we go. We got to what we need to get to. We got to what we need to get to. Now, they tell you all these lies, which you can read. But I read, read, listen to this lecture first. Know what's going on and then go read it. All right? So they tell you all these lies just to get right here and hide this truth from you on Wikipedia, right? So all this bullshit on Wikipedia before this paragraph, they talking about Great Britain and Spain fighting. But then when you get to this paragraph, they talk about what really what, what was really going on. Check this picture out. Well, who is this picture picture of? It says, the only known photograph of a black refugee. All right? These are your Cherokee Indians. These are your Florida Seminoles. These are the people they call, they, they, they call Florida, they was calling Florida Seminoles. Now, they call them Florida Seminoles. In, in Cherokee, all right? This is how we looked, all right? The same way we look now. So they had us behind all these names. Check them out. He was called, he was called a black refugee. And during this war of 1812, a number of African-American slaves escaped aboard British ships, all right? So here we go. Let's dive into what was really going on. Freeing and recruiting slaves. Check this out. The British Royal Navy's blockades and raids allowed about 4,000 African Americans to escape slavery by fleeing American plantations aboard British ships. That's a fucking lie. Okay? But let's keep going. American slaves near, near to the British military rebelled against their masters. Okay? All right? All right? Pay attention. Key word. Rebel. Your ancestors. Against their masters. And made their way to British encampments. More lies. Do you think that your ancestors, black asses, black like we been, smart as we fucking been, like we was then, would rebel against our masters only to turn around and go to Great Britain, who are the same motherfuckers? This is how they lie to you on Wikipedia. No, nigga. We was rebelling against their ass. Nigga, that's why the whole war was even being fought. Okay? Check this out. The migrants who settled in Canada were known as black refugees. Now, they want you to believe that we went and settled in Canada. Nigga, ain't no black people go settle in Canada. We were already in Canada. We were everywhere. This is our land. All right? So, it was black people everywhere. All right? But it's just more lies to tell you in Wikipedia to throw you off. The, the black... The government order, they were order, they were considered free. Wait, wait, hold on. Let's say the blockading British fleet in the Chesapeake Bay received increasing numbers of freed slaves during 1813. By British government order, they were considered free persons when they reached British hands. Lies. Alexander Cochran, Cochran's proclamation of April 2nd, 1814, invited Americans who wished to immigrate to join the British. Although it did not explicitly mention slaves, it was taken by all as addressed to them. About 2,400 escaped slaves and their families were transported by the Royal Navy to the Royal Naval Dockyard at Bermuda. Now, that's the truth. Okay? That's the truth. All right? They were definitely transporting motherfuckers and moving motherfuckers around. All right? They were employed on works about the yard and organized as a militia to aid in the difference of the yard. 
All right, now check this out. They fought for Britain through the Atlantic campaign. That's a lie. They fought for themselves. All right? But they this is how they hide us rebelling against them. Look, the Battle of Bladensburg and the attacks on Washington, D.C., that was all us, y'all. These were these are rebellion. These are us. This is us rebelling. All right, this is in the War of 18. This is during that War of 1812. And... Battles of ba the Battle of Baltimore, another battle where we were where we rebelled. These were black people rebelling and winning. All right, shit they don't talk about. Before withdrawing to Bermuda with the rest of the British forces, we didn't go to Bermuda with the British forces, but niggas did go to Bermuda. But remember, we were already in Bermuda. That's why niggas went to Bermuda. We were everywhere. All right, they try to make it seem like niggas went to Bermuda and then that's how niggas got there. You know what I'm saying? No, we were already everywhere. We gods. We've been here. All right, now, now peep game. Next next sentence. They were later settled in Trinidad. They tried to make it seem like this is how black people got to Trinidad. Once again, we were already there. After having rejected orders for transfer to the West Indian re regiments, forming a community of the Americans. All right? So, they want the Americans, a lot of people don't know who the Americans are, but the Americans was basically a group of black rebels. But they want to call them Marines. Check them out. This shit get deep, y'all. Know your history. Americans. What were Americans? The Americans or Americans were African American Marines of the War of 1812. What I say? Fucking lies, though. Yeah, we were fighting before our fucking self, but they want to make it seem like we were fighting for their ass. You get what I'm saying? This is how they be getting niggas in the army with that shit. Well, you know, black people didn't fight. We wasn't fighting for their ass in no form, shape, or capacity. We was fighting against their ass, and the Americans was fucking their ass up. But they want you to believe they were African-American Marines that fought in the War of 1812. And the Americans were former African slaves who fought for the British against the U.S. in the corpse of colonial Marines and then after post-war services in Bermuda were established as a community in the south of Trinidad. They were settled in an area populated by French-speaking Catholics and retained cohesion as an English-speaking Baptist community. Look at them. Trying to water us down like that. English-speaking and Baptist community. Look at them. Want us in their religion so bad. Man, yo, these motherfuckers was gangsters. All right? More, more, more of your ancestors that they hide in history. The Americans. The Americans, which they called them. All right, let's get up off them. We still in the War of 1812. So this is what was going on in 1812. All right? My, we was rebelling, and the whole war of 1812 was basically us fighting against them still because they was trying to take our land, all right? Now, check it out. That's what that's how the Creek Wars are get mentioned. Look at the Creek Wars. These are black people. These are pictures of black people. Look. In 1813, Creek Warriors attacked Fort Mims and killed 400 to 500 people. The massacre became a rallying point for Americans. So they said after the Creek Warriors killed all these white people, that started, that was that made them attack the Creeks who were Seminoles. All right. So this is the war that led Andrew, that Andrew Jackson started killing the Creeks in. And he was saying that he was mad at the Seminoles because they killed off a lot of his people. And then he kept that grudge with him. So and even after the war, 1812 was over with, he went and attacked the Seminoles. That's what they're telling you in here. All right. Because they get to talk about the Indian frontier, Western Georgia, and the wars and all this. It get deep. Like, it's a lot of it. That's, that's why I want y'all to read a lot of this for y'all self and just read about all these different battles. But just keep in mind that this was your ancestors fighting them because they were trying to take our land. This shit is written all in their history books. It's just they hide it because most of it is documented under Native Americans. And they got you thinking you that you black and you came from Africa. Nigga, no, this is your history. This is who they talking about, you and your people. You. You know what I'm saying? Like, like facts. Look at all this. These were black people, man. All right? So, now, the reason we even went and looked into this War of 1812, let's go back up here. All right? It's because, let's go back, we was looking at the Seminole Wars, and we was talking about Andrew Jackson and how he started going into Seminole territory after the War of 1812. Well, the reason Andrew Jackson started invading their territory, the Seminoles, is because the Seminoles was fighting in the War of 1812 against their ass. Don't that make more sense if that they was already fighting us, right, in that war? So Andrew Jackson got mad and kept fighting them, and that led to other wars, as opposed to with us, as opposed to them trying to say Andrew Jackson just went into West Florida and East Florida and attacked the Seminoles. 
after the after the conclusion of World War of, of eighteen twelve. Okay, why would he attack? Them? What's the reason? They even telling you. They say. The governments of Great Britain and Spain themselves expressed outrage over the invasion. Okay, so that means that even... Because they tell you that they say Andrew Jackson went and raided the Seminoles against orders. They say Great Britain and Spain did not give... They told Andrew Jackson do not go raid the Seminoles after the War of 1812. And Andrew Jackson said fuck that and still raided them. Now, you know that's a lie. Because if that's the case, why would they provide Andrew Jackson military support after raiding the Seminoles, if they didn't agree with it. After Andrew Jackson raided the Seminoles, after the War of 1812 was over with, right, Great Britain and them still helped him fight us, okay? So, it's imperative that you understand this, y'all. This is real detrimental history, man, and these Florida Seminoles were black people, man, and everybody living in Florida with carbon in their skin, if you go back two, three generations, they is fucking, they would be considered Seminoles, you go back 10 generations before that, they would be considered fucking gods or Egyptians or the, uh, 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 or, the, or, or the people of Kemet. You go back more years than that, they would be considered what we are, what we really are, gods and goddesses. This is all lies taught to us about us in history, y'all, to hide, uh, hide us from us, man. Now, let's dive into this Florida Seminole, the first Seminole War. Now that we know how we got here, we know that Andrew Jackson bitch ass was mad. All right. We know that Andrew Jackson was mad. Let's keep in mind that they were already warring with us, y'all, before they even war with the Seminoles. The Seminoles... This is what the Seminoles did. Hold on. Remember, we all worked together. So, during the War 1812, they was fighting right here. Andrew Jackson and them was in Georgia fighting, right? And the Seminoles was coming and helping the Cherokee and these other tribes fight them. And the Seminoles, they fight hard. So, when they was coming, they was fucking them boys up. And they end up killing... A lot of Andrew Jackson family members and shit. Like, remember how I just clicked on the Wolf 1812? And it was showing y'all how in that war, that the, that at the Creek War, that a lot of the, the Creeks attacked the English or these human beings and caught them off guard and killed 500 of them? Well, it was more than that, though. It was more like 50,000. You know, Wikipedia ain't gonna tell it all to you. Well, in those 50,000 people that was killed, some of them was Andrew Jackson family. So he had a grudge still against the Seminoles. That's why he still went and invaded their ass even after the war was over with. And they want to call it excursions. Now, let's keep reading about the, how the first Seminole War. Okay, so we know how it started. It starts because Andrew Jackson is holding a grudge against the Seminoles because the Seminoles helped fuck his people up in the War of 1812. All right, now we know how the hell... Why they even came to fuck with them. But on top of that, they still wanted the Seminoles land. They still wanted Florida too. Let's not forget that, okay? So all the motive is there. Now check this out. The governments of Great Britain and Spain both expressed outrage over the invasion. Lies. However, Spain was unable to defend or control the territory as several local uprisings and rebellions made clear. Made that, made clear. All right? So, basically, the Seminoles was fucking them up. The Seminoles was fucking Spain up. That's why they say <clears throat> they was unable to defend. Spain was unable to defend or control the territory. Because they couldn't handle the Seminoles. We was fucking their ass up. And the black folks was fucking them up. You know what I'm saying? As several local uprisings and rebellions made clear, the Spanish crown agreed to cede Florida to the United States. So, because Spain couldn't do nothing with the Seminoles, this is when they end up selling Florida to the United States in the Adonis Treaty. This is the fucking, this treaty right here, I'm going to click on it. This is the, the, the Florida Purchase where they bought, where they try to make you think the United States and Spain is two different people, but basically... They had already labeled the land theirs before they even took it. 
All right, this is why they're able to tra trade and sell it. But basically, this treaty is when they said like, hey, okay, well, Florida is officially going to be United States because they was going to rename. They were going from, they were all they already had. Listen, the United States is a is a company. Look at the USA as a company. So they already knew that they was going to create this company and they was going to make us work for this company, which we work for today, right? We wasn't enslaved yet. This is what the fucking wars was about. Because they wanted us to work for their company, which they eventually got us to that point where we are today. We're right there today. This is what our ancestors was fighting against, though. This You got to know why the wars were being fought. They were trying to take our land, which they end up taking. That's why it's called, what, what is it called today, y'all? It's called Florida, ain't it? Because they end up taking it, nigga. All right, but you need to know how they took it, though. Niggas love to go down to Miami and kick it and do all that shit. We need to know more about Florida than Miami and kicking it. All right? Understand the history. All right? So, the transfer took place in 1821. According to the Treaty of Moultrie, Creek, the Seminoles were required to leave northern Florida and were confined to a large reservation in the center of the Florida Peninsula. The U.S. government enforced the treaty by building a series of forts and trading posts in the territory, mainly along the Gulf and Atlantic coast. All right. So. Check it. Let's check out this treaty. 